Amen. We have the 4th of July coming up this Wednesday, celebrating this country's independence, a hard-fought independence that took place only 200 years ago. Many people sacrificed their lives so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have today. But years before that, somebody died so that we could have a different kind of freedom. Years ago, Christ died on the cross in a short fought battle that <laughs> gave us true freedom. They gave us a freedom that nobody can take away. The freedom that we enjoy as a country right now, if a bigger, better army comes along and defeats us, our freedoms are gone. They're gone. They're right out the door. And we'll be remembering the freedoms that we used to have. We won't be celebrating July 4th anymore. No longer a holiday. But the freedom that we have in Christ, nobody can take that away from us. It's permanent. When the sun sets free, is free indeed. So that's the true freedom that we celebrate. Not once a year, but we celebrate that every day. We celebrate it every Sunday when we come together and worship in the presence of others. We celebrate it every day when we wake up, when we take after waking us up and giving us the full function of our, our bodies and clothing us in our right minds. But that independence came to Christ. It cost Christ. It cost Jesus his life. Thankfully for us, he didn't see that. <laughs> he died and rose again on that third day. He was raised again. Ascended into heaven. That's establishing our restored relationship with Christ. Our scripture this morning comes from Luke chapter 23 verses 1 through 12. And this is prior to that crucifixion experience. Jesus has been arrested. He's been betrayed by Judas. He's been arrested. And I'm going to read through all 12 verses. And then we're going to walk through each one. Luke chapter 23 verses 1 through 12. It says, Then the whole multitude of them rose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Then Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, So Pilate said to the chief priests and to the crowd, I find no fault in this man. But they were more fierce, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, being from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if this man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew, as soon as he knew that, as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod who was in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, Herod, Herod was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for a long time to see him because he had heard many things about him and he hoped to see uh, some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and, and the scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him and arrayed him with a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. And that very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other. For previously, they had had enmity with each other. So here we have Christ who's been falsely accused. He's been arrested. And so now he's brought before Pilate, who is the leader of the land. Pilate. He's been brought before Pilate. Pharisees and the scribes, they brought him before him, the leaders of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, the, the nation of Israel, the children of Israel, they brought him before him. Then the whole multitude of them rose up and led him before Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, we found this fellow perverting the nation 
and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. They gathered Jesus up and they brought him before Herod, and they're falsely accusing him. We can read in the Bible where Jesus said, Give unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Amen. So we know that they're not telling the truth. We know that he's been falsely accused. Jesus didn't at that time. What, what, what do we see here? That Jesus, he's just, he's just going on in the crowd. He knows what he has to do. He knows what has to take place. He knows what his purpose for being here is. He knows what he must go through in order to, to give freedom and liberty unto us who are unbound by sin. So Pilate, here it is, he's before Pilate, and Pilate asks him the question, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered, it is as you say. Simple question, simple answer. Pilate just wanted to hear. Pilate just wanted to know. These people are accusing you. They're saying you say this. They're saying you say that. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, it is as you say. So Pilate said to the chief priests in the crowd, I find no fault in this man. But they were more fierce, saying he stirs up the people, teaching throughout um, all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. Here you have, they brought him before Pilate. They brought him before the judge. They, they have a, a, a purpose in bringing him before Pilate. They want him crucified. They want him killed. They can't do it by their own hands. So they want to do it. They want somebody else to pronounce the death sentence before Jesus. And all Jesus is doing is what God put him here to do. All he's doing is preaching the gospel. All he's doing is saying, love your neighbor as yourself. All he's saying is, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. He's saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. These are all the things. That's all Jesus is saying. Jesus didn't come being anti-Rome. He didn't come being anti-Caesar. He didn't come with a political agenda. He didn't come trying to persuade people to think and believe this way. All Jesus came to do was pro pro pronounce to, to, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. That's all Jesus came to do. So he's brought before Pilate. Pilate asked him a simple question. Are you the king of the Jews? Is what they're saying true? Jesus says, as far as this, being the king of the Jews, answering Pilate's question directly, yes, it is as you say. So now the chief priests and the crown, they get more adamant. They get more vehement. They get more, more fierce, it says. Saying he stirs up the people teaching. He's stirring up people with his teaching because his teaching is not... <laughs> in line with what the, the leaders, what these people have been teaching the people, okay? It's not in line with any of that. This is new. This is a whole new doctrine. This is the doctrine of love. This isn't the doctrine of you have to do this in order to, to please man so that man can now <coughs> find favor with God. No, this is not what uh, Jesus is preaching and teaching along the place, along the way. So they say that he's been stirred up in all of Judea, starting from Galilee, Unto this, unto this place. Here, here's that hmm, Galilee. Is this man a Galilean? Is this man a Galilean? Yes. He's already said he finds no fault with Jesus. So they, like I said, when they when they come back with all their with, with more further accusations, this pilot he thinks he's found this out. He says, well, okay, if this man's a Galilean, this is not my jurisdiction. Send him up before here. Send him up to here. Because Herod was in Jerusalem at that time. Verse 8 says, Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for a long time to see him, because he had heard many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle done by Jesus. Herod has heard about Jesus. He's heard that Jesus heals people. He's heard the, the teachings that, 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 uh, that, that Jesus has done. He's heard the miracles that Jesus has performed. Everything that Jesus has done has gotten back to Herod. Herod is exceedingly glad. His, Herod is excited that Jesus is now going to be before him. Not so that he can hear the gospel. Not so that he can hear the truth. Herod thinks he's getting ready to see a show. Herod thinks he's got a ticket to the circus. Herod thinks now that uh, uh, David Copperfield is going to come before him and perform a few magic tricks so that he can be entertained. That's what Herod's mindset is right now because he is exceedingly glad. 
Herod was exceedingly glad, for he desired for a long time to see him because he'd heard many things about him and he'd hoped to see some miracle done by Jesus. Herod was hoping to, 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 to see the show. Any miracle would have done. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. Pilate, when they brought Jesus before Pilate, and they threw all the accusations out, they said, this man says he's a king. This man says he's a king. They're trying to, blow, they're trying to, they're trying to provoke Pilate. They're trying to prick Pilate's pride. Say, this man says he's a king. You're the leader of this jurisdiction, but this man says he's a king. Okay, this man is questioning your authority now. Pilate asked Jesus a simple question. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, yes, it is as you say. Simple question. Pilate just wanted to, Pilate was looking for answers. Looking for answers. Herod wanted to show. Herod wanted to see a miracle. Herod did not get to see the miracle that he was hoping to see. Then he questioned him with many words, but Jesus answered him not. Jesus didn't engage. Jesus did not engage. He knew what Herod was up to. He knew Herod was just wanted to see a show. He knew Herod was just a looky-loo, a, a miracle seeker. He knew that Herod, that's all Herod desired, was to see a show. And Jesus answered him, nothing. So here we go again. Now the chief priest stood and vehemently accused him. Vehemently accused him. They stepped up their game. Well, they're accusing him even harder. They're, they're making up more stuff about Jesus. In the presence of Herod. Because Jesus didn't even answer. Jesus didn't even answer Herod. So they, they step up their game again. Jesus answered Pilate. Pilate saw the simple, simple answer to a simple question. Jesus, the accusations went forward. Even before Pilate, when the accusations were going forward, Jesus didn't argue. Jesus didn't defend himself. Jesus didn't try to clear his good name. He didn't do any of that. Even before Herod, where Herod's wanting to see a show, where Herod's wanting to see this great grand miracle when Jesus is capable of performing anything before Herod. Anything that Herod had true need of, Jesus could have provided. Jesus could have done. Because we know from every account leading up to the crucifixion, leading up to this experience, Jesus had done it. He's healed the blind. He's healed the, the lame. He's raised the dead. He's called seas. He's done all of this stuff that no man has been able to do prior to. But here we are before Herod. Herod wants to see the show. Jesus answers him not. So the Pharisees and the scribes, the, 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 the chief priests and the leaders, the chief priests and the scribes, and they begin to vehemently accuse him all the more. And then Herod with his men of war, because Jesus answered him not. Then Herod with his men of war treated him with contempt and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. And that very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other. For they previously had enmity with one another. Both of them came before Jesus, came before both of them. Neither man could find fault with Jesus. Neither man can find fault with Jesus. What we have here is Jesus giving us an example of there were three different situations before Christ. You had accusers at both stages. Accusers spouting out things that they say Christ did. Accusers. You had Herod who sought truth, who just wanted the answer to a question. Or excuse me, Pilate, who sought truth, who just wanted the answer to a question. Then you had Herod, who wanted to see a show. And the only one Christ gave an answer to, the only one Christ gave an answer to was Pilate. Pilate sought truth. Pilate 
and saw the truth. So Jesus answered him what he was seeing. Pilate saw the truth. The accusers, Jesus didn't argue with the accusers. At either stage, Jesus did not argue with the accusers. Jesus didn't put on a show for Herod. Because what he was doing, his purpose for being here, was to point people to God, was to give God honor and glory in everything that he did. And if he's on demand, putting on a show, trying to show the goodness and the power and the glory of heaven, if he's doing that on demand for that, then God gets no glory again. God's not a showman. And this is particularly, particularly outstanding, I would say, for us here in Vegas because there's so many shows that we can go to. We can buy tickets, we can go see Cirque du Soleil, uh, all of those, any other, Zumanity, all those other all those shows that are out there. We go see the Blue Man Group. We go hear comedians all up and down the strip. We can put on, they put on shows to entertain. Herod wanted to be entertained. Jesus was not interested in entertaining. The accusers, the accusers, we're looking to defame Jesus. The, the accusers were looking to, to defame, to tear down, to, to, to malign, to say bad things about Jesus. It doesn't say any, anywhere in there where he took up argument with them. It doesn't say anywhere where he attempted to defend himself against those accusations because Jesus knew who he was. Jesus knew who he was. Jesus knew what he had done. Jesus knew why he did what he did. Jesus had no reason to argue with the accusers. Jesus had no reason to defend himself against the accusations of an angry mob. Jesus had no reason to. You have the accusers. You have Pilate. And then you have Herod. The accusers went unanswered by Jesus at both stages. You have Herod seeking answers. Jesus answered the question. You have Pilate. I keep getting them mixed up and I'm sorry. You have Pilate who sought an answer and Jesus answered the question. You have Herod who sought to be entertained, who sought a show. Jesus answered him not. This is our lesson. That as we go through our life, we're going to have accusers. Don't argue with your accusers. Don't entertain your accusers. Because even in arguing and trying to defend yourself against the accusers, you're taken away from what God put you here to do. You're taken away from the purpose because now you're engaging in an argument. You might win an argument but lose a soul for the kingdom. Don't give credence to your accusers. And it's they, they, were, they were in both situations. They were there before Pilate. When Pilate was asking Jesus a simple answer, a simple question, and Jesus gave a simple answer, the accusers were still there. They were still there. When he goes before Herod, and Herod wants to be entertained, the accusers were still there. They were still there. But Herod, Pilate. Pilate didn't want to be entertained. Pilate was trying to play shit. And Jesus answered him, simple and concise. It is as you say. Some people are going to come into our lives and they just want an answer. They just need an answer. There's a situation before them and they just need an answer. A simple and concise answer. It is as you say. Somebody's coming along and they got family problems. We bring them to the word. And let the word speak for itself. Jesus spoke on his own behalf just that one time. It is as you say. We're going to have people come that come into our lives that get us seeking that knowledge. He just didn't he didn't overdo it. He didn't give a long sermon. He didn't give a whole speech. He didn't give an entire litany. He has a one, two, three, four. In the New King James Version, five words. It is as you say. 
you didn't offer anything beyond that. But then there's going to be others to come in your life, and they're going to be like Herod. They want to see a show. If your God is so good, then why is this happening in the world? If your God is so strong and powerful, then why is all of this going on and happening in the world? They want to see a show. They want to be entertained. They want to be impressed by God. They're not seeking truth. We don't have to answer those questions. Because that is going to come, that's going to produce, again, an argument. That's going to produce a fruitless conversation. These situations are going to arise in our lives. These, these conversations are going to happen. We're going to have our accusers. We're going to have the ones who, who, who seek the truth. We're going to have those who don't believe but just want to be entertained. <laughs> But it's up to us to know who we are. It's up to us to know what our purpose is. It's up to us to, to stand and make that stand for righteousness. And say that no matter what, no matter who comes along, it's going to be about God first and foremost. If it's about God first and foremost, if we remember what it is that God says about us, Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I have for you, thoughts to prosper, prosper you and not to harm you, unto an expected end. If we know that about ourselves, and if we can walk and stand in that about ourselves, then nothing anybody else says, nothing anybody else comes along and accuses us of, huh, can get us off track. If we remember what God says about us, you, from Jesus' standpoint, remember at the point where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, and the Holy Spirit came down on him in the form of a dove. And the heavens opened up and God's voice came down and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. To Jesus, <coughs> that's the only thing that mattered. That's the only thing that mattered. God said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And there were plenty of witnesses there. So that is the only thing that mattered. So what the accusers came and said about Jesus didn't matter. Because Jesus knew what God had said about him. And Jesus stood on and Jesus held on to what God had said about him. What he knew to be true. What his father had affirmed in his life. Jesus held on to that. And it didn't sway him. When Herod wants to see a show... When Herod wants to be entertained, when Herod wants a miracle for performed, because Herod wants to see a miracle performed, Jesus is able to stand because his father has said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Because he knew why he had to go through everything that he was going through. He knew that his purpose was to walk this earth. He knew that his purpose was to be crucified on the cross. He knew that he had to take on the sins of the world. He knew that at a certain point, God would have to turn his back on him because, because of all the sin that he had taken on in the world. Jesus can say something about God that none of us can say. Jesus can say that at a certain point in his life, God had to turn his back on him. Because at that point, when Jesus took on all that sin, God could no longer face it. Which is why he says, by God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But, we as believers, when God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, God has kept that promise. Jesus has a testimony that we don't have. But he endured that so that we could enjoy that promise. <laughs> He endured that so that we could enjoy the fact that God would never leave us, nor forsake us, never turn his back on us. He knew what he was here to do. He knew what his purpose was. He knew who he was. He held to what his father had said about him, and he didn't let it deter him. In the face of all these accusers, in the face of all these false accusations, Jesus stood on what he knew, and that's our challenge today. As we go through life, as we go through our days, and as we go through uh, 
whatever it is that we go through, to know what God's purpose is for our lives, to know that he's put us here for a reason, to know that what we, what he has called us to do, there's so many different things that the word that God has called us out to do. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, but go therefore into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Big disciples of all nations. We're out here to, to live our life before men. We're also the words that let your light so shine before men. So that they will see it and know that there is a God. We're called to do that. We're called to let our light shine. We're called to make disciples of all men. And because we're doing that, there's an enemy out there that wants us not to do that. Because he is an enmity with God. Anybody that lines up with God puts that, sets themselves up against directly against him. So he's going to come against that. He's not going to be happy about it. So he's going to do whatever he can to get us off track. He's going to send people to accuse us. He's going to send people to say false things about us. He's going to send people that want to see a show. That want to see a miracle performed. He's going to, he's going to send those kind of people along. Because they'll say, well, if, if, if God is who he is, then jump off this building and let God save you. No. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Because God is not. He's not in the entertainment business. God is in the saving. He's in the delivering. He's in the, he's in the business of comforting his children. Amen. <laughs> Just remember that as a believer. Just remember that. What God has spoken about, no man can change. What God has declared in your life, no man can change. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter what you go through. Jesus, when he went through all of this, he stood in the confidence of the Lord. He didn't sit and wonder what he must have done wrong to have this come upon him because he knew what his purpose was. He knew what, it, what his end had to be in this earth. He knew and he was assured in the words of his father. So as we go through doing what it is God has called us to do, just live our lives for him, loving him for who he is. People are going to look down on us. People are going to talk about us. But it doesn't change what God has said. It doesn't change what God has purposed us to do. No man can change that. So, in the face of the accusers, who made some, don't argue. In the face of those who want to be entertained, don't seek to entertain those who want to be entertained. But to those who are seeking the answer, but to those who are seeking the we just want an answer to a question. <laughs> Be ready for the word. Amen. Amen. That is the word for the day. Let's give God some praise again. Because he is so awesome in this place.